Welcome to Kingsway. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Kingsway. So glad you're here. Welcome to Kingsway. Welcome to church. Welcome to church, Kingsway family. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to Kingsway. Welcome to Kingsway. Welcome to Kingsway. Hi, Kingsway. Welcome to Kingsway. We're glad that you're here. Be sure to say hi in the chat. Yeah, welcome home. Let's worship together. Sing worthy of every song.
Join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you are you are pouring over us with your grace and with your love, and that we can trust you to give us everything we need. Lord Jesus, I, I pray for people who need healing right now. Um, we pray for little Victoria as um, she's been having little seizures that uh, the doctors are trying to figure out what to do about and what kind of medication. So I just pray for healing. She's been through so much in her young life and I just pray for healing in your name, Lord Jesus. And she's got a surgery coming up for her hip. And and Jesus, I just, I pray that her body would be restored and that she would have a sense of your presence with her and your healing touch working in her. And also give her mom and her dad, Rosemary and Ubaldo, Give them peace, Jesus. Give them wisdom. And I just pray that their family would grow strong together. I pray for others in our church, even if you're listening right now, if you need a healing, Lord, Lord Jesus, I pray that your healing touch would be on each person who reaches out to you, who has a need and who acknowledges with trust and with faith that you are the answer to their need. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us in our personal lives. Uh, you're with us in our family lives. I pray for relationships between parents and children and between husbands and wives and between friends and, and extended family. Lord God, I pray that we would be people who are compassionate and who are good to each other and who are just and who are kind and generous. That you would challenge us to be all of those things. That we would become more and more like you in our relationships with each other and with those around us, our neighbors and our community, as we navigate these tough times, Lord Jesus, I pray that as your church, we would just bring your heart, your heart of grace, your heart of love to those around us, Jesus. That we would not stand for um, our own our own needs and our, our own desires and our own rights, but we would lay down our lives. We would lay down our lives like you laid down your life. Thank you, Lord God, that you're in control. You're in control of all that's going on in our world. You're in control of all of the, the turmoil and the unrest and all of the um, power struggles that are going on in our world, Lord Jesus. Nobody is in control outside of your, of, uh, of your commission. And so, Lord God, I just pray that we would have trust knowing that you are in complete control. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your grace in our lives. And thank you for your powerful control in our lives and in this world. We acknowledge you as the one great God and King. In your name, amen. Hi, Kingsway Church. I'm here today to talk to you about something. Something that we see all around us every single day if we have our eyes open and we are out walking around and that is a need and that need is that there are people there are vulnerable people out on the streets in the cold this is something i have to be honest i often ignore or i give them a granola bar and i keep walking 
but my children don't want to ignore it. I have two six-year-olds and they see people cold and sitting on the concrete and it bothers them. And all honesty, I think it bothers Jesus too because he spent a lot of time with the poor and the needy and the vulnerable. He never asked why they were there before he helped them. He just served them and chose to love them and see that they were a human being created by him. So as a church, we are gonna start a project called Meet the Need. And in Meet the Need right now, we are gonna make care packages for people. I really want people to, um, who um, are out in the cold to know that God loves them. Our care packages will have things like warm blankets, toothbrush and toothpaste to keep your teeth clean, warm gloves, sanitizer wipes, warm socks, and snacks and some other things. We're going to give some care packages to Street Church. We're going to leave some care packages at Kingsway Church for community. Kingsway, this is something you can get your whole family involved in. The kids can go shopping with you. What you can do is you can go to kingswayforshire.com slash meet the need and click on there and there's pictures and there is a list of things that you can buy. So when you're at the grocery store getting your groceries and you see a pack of little packages of trail mix, you can grab them along with your groceries or you can grab a toothbrush and toothpaste and you can bring what you buy into the church. Or if you scroll down to the bottom of that page on the website, it'll say ways to give because some things we'll buy in bulk that we're going to put into the care packages. So for example, we're going to put some face masks in there for them. So those things we'll buy in bulk and then put some in each bag. So if you would like to give toward that, you can give financially and just click on the link and follow. Thank you so much, Kingsway. Hey, Kingsway family, welcome. If you don't already feel welcome, I hope you feel welcome now. I'm in the church building and I've got my mask on because in all the public spaces, you need to wear a mask. But let's check out what's going on in the offices and see if we can catch up on what's happening in the life of Kingsway Church. Uh, you might see they're not wearing their masks in their offices. That's their space, but when they come out here, uh, everyone puts their masks on. So let's go, let's, uh, let's see what Tina's doing. I'm gonna surprise Tina. Let's surprise Tina over here. Hi, Tina. Hi. How are you? I hear that we got our giving receipts mailed out this week. They're all mailed. Okay, great, yep, thanks, no. Tina. Thanks Long for... as the postman doesn't take them too long. <laughs> you should get them this week. <laughs> awesome, thanks for all your hard work. Thank you, no problem. Okay, let's see what's going on. Oh, here, Pastor Darren's office. Oh, hey Darren, you're hard at work. Hey everybody. Yeah, we're gonna see you in a little while with uh, the message, right? Yes, okay. yes, I'm working on it. He's working on a sermon. Okay, I'm just gonna... Oh, Jackie's eating. Hi Jackie. Hi. <laughs> oh, let's check in with Rose. Cause I think, um... let's see. Kids own boxes are due deadline is this week? Yeah, it's this Sunday today. And if you just send me an email if you want to sign up for kids, it's kids at kingswayfoursquare.com. Awesome. So this Sunday is the deadline for the February box. Thanks, Rose. I'll close your door. Thanks. Okay, so now you know a little bit of what's going on in the life of Kingsway Church. And why don't you get your Bibles and your notebooks and your pens and get ready as we look into the Word of God. Hi Kingsway Church, uh, whether you're watching uh, live with us this morning on January 31st or finding us uh, later online, you've stumbled across the Kingsway Church uh, YouTube channel, I pray that you are encouraged and blessed and that you know God loves you and cares about you deeply. Uh, he wants your faith. He wants your faith. He wants all of our faith in Christ to increase and to grow and for the relationship with him, for our relationship with him to just be the best it can be and to be the most important thing in your life. Uh, so I, I, I hope you sense God's presence and his voice today. 
Now, as pastor of the Kingsway Church, I don't want to tell you uh, how to think or how to act. Well, I mean, you know, some days, some days I really do want to tell you <laughs> tell you how to think and act. I want to yell it. I want to shout it out. But I, I know after years of being in ministry, uh, there are people who will never listen to the pastor and there are others on the far end of the spectrum who will only listen to the pastor and they're looking for a leader who will uh, direct their lives and and help them in make every decision that comes up well for decades and decades uh, the Kingsway Church has chosen to not be one of those uh, controlling type churches uh, telling people uh, what to buy or telling people who to marry or telling people who to vote for those sort of things and, and believe me those those churches exist and many people love and crave that style of leadership uh, but that's not us it's not going to be us pastor barry uh, taught us before and I, and I believe it that the church leader's role is to guide people in uh, hearing and following the Lord for themselves. It's your, uh, it's your job to hear God, listen to Him, and obey Him and follow Him. Uh, that's why we focus at the church here is, is on intentionally preaching the Bible and not just the topics of the day. Uh, because if we learn to listen and discern the Holy Spirit through God's Word, uh, and not just um, not just kind of fumble our way through life, but actually hear Him, then we'll learn to navigate uh, all of those um, daily issues that we're faced with, all of those big crisis moments that happen uh, in our world. And I, I see many of you doing that, and I'm proud of you. I just want you to, you to know that I, I, I see it, and uh, I really think it's great that you hear God. You, you, you love and you show hospitality and gentleness and, and care and generosity and, and courage in your lives regardless of what stress or pressure that you're facing. And that's, that's because Christ is alive in you. Christ lives in you and he's helping you uh, to live like Jesus and, and he oozes out of you whenever the pressure hits in your life or when others needed to be uh, lifted up and encouraged. So way to go. You're doing great. I appreciate that. So many of you at Kingsway Church. It's awesome. And as your Kingsway pastoral staff, uh, Jackie and Rose and Beth and Lonnie and Barry and I, we want to encourage you to keep listening for the Lord's voice. Keep, keep focused on what he sounds like, your shepherd. What, what, does he, what does he sound like? Listen to him. Keep reading God's word. Uh, keep doing good, even when it be, you become weary of it. Don't stop. Uh, and know the shepherd's voice in your life so that you're not thrown off uh, when personal struggles happen or when global pandemics happen and the like. I was reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 this week and it, it, it kind of reads like a manual for for a minister um, we'll be looking at that part of the Bible today so if you have your Bibles you can open it to, to first Thessalonians chapter 2 um, and maybe it'll give us some insights into the what the why and the how of a Christian leaders role uh, a peek into the heart of your Kingsway Church leaders but first uh, uh, here are some foundational leadership theology that we ascribe to um, from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. It says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ then we will no longer be like infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. 
That sounds a lot like last week's message from Colossians, right? Keep your head. Don't be like Mike the chicken. Uh, Don't lose connection to Jesus Christ, the head, so that we can all grow and mature into the people God wants us to be. He wants us to be his church, his bride, the bride of Christ. And if we're built up, reaching unity in the faith, like it says, we, we won't be fooled and deceived, but rather we'll attain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's what Paul writes there. I don't know exactly what that will be, be like. I don't know what attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ in our lives looks like, but it sounds way better than being weak and feeling sorry for ourselves all the time, right? Keep connected to Christ. That's what we're trying to help all of us do here at the Kingsway Church. So let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12 together. And just a reminder, this was um, a letter written by Paul the Apostle to the Christians who lived in Thessalonica. And uh, they were the Thessalonians. They were uh, near modern day Greece uh, on the Aegean Sea. You can find it in, uh, on a map today. They were real people in a real city with real issues and a real faith in Jesus, just like us. There had been accusations of insincerity against Paul. So he addresses it and he recounts uh, his ministry among them. He's writing a letter to them. And in doing so, we get a glimpse into the what, the why, and the how of his ministry. So let's read. Verse 1. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though, as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you, because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. First of all, the what of of ministry is a message and Paul's message was God's good news Uh, he wrote in verse 2 with the help of our God we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition that word gospel uh, means news means good news and that was what uh, always that was always the what of Paul's ministry it was what he did is what he was called to do the message of God's good news the gospel is that God knows you God knows you by name. He knows your life, all your great qualities and your not so great qualities, all your faults and sin and all the good that you've done too. God knows you. God forgives you. All that sin and guilt can be erased. He wants to take away your shame and he wants to restore and and redeem your life uh, to give you value and give you worth. The Bible says that you are a treasure to him. The gospel is that he created you and wants a relationship with you. Our sin keeps us from being uh, in a close relationship with a sinless God. Uh, But he wants to restore that friendship and bridge that gap. And, And even more, not just to become friends with God, he wants to adopt us as daughters and sons into his family. Isn't that great? That's part of the gospel. Another part is that he loves you. God has a deeper love for you than you can fully fathom. 
He offers the good news of a restored relationship because he aches for it. He misses us. He created us for relationship. And that sin in our lives and throughout history has caused that gap to widen. And he wants that restored, our relationship, because he loves you. And the gospel also means that we cannot earn or pay for or atone for any of our sin or our unrighteousness, but that Jesus Christ paid the cost of it all on the cross as a sacrifice for the world, for the people who God loves so deeply. And what is required of us is to believe in Christ, put our faith in him with our words and our actions, uh, love him back, and then just simply walk with him through life as he changes our lives and restores our hearts. That was Paul, a minister, and that was his message. It wasn't rules. It wasn't religion. He didn't say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. He brought Jesus Christ to people and said, this is God's heart. It was God's good news for humanity. And do we ever need it still? We still do. The gospel is still so important and it's life-changing. Have you accepted the good news that God loves you and has forgiveness for you? Have, you? have you responded to that? You can do that right now, right where you're at, right today. It's, it's a heart belief and then a spoken acknowledgement of that free gospel. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says this, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If you're unsure of your standing with God, eh, maybe, maybe you know that he loves you and died for you, and eh, rose again, conquering death, and wants to walk with you for the rest of your life, I would encourage you to take a moment to accept and believe in your heart the gospel message and then take a few seconds to say out loud, Jesus is Lord or, or Jesus, I need you or Jesus, I love you. Something audible from your lips. Push air past your lips. Make an audible admission that confirms your belief in him. Take a second to do that right now. Lord, you're good. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I'm so thankful for this great gospel, this great good news, that you would even forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. The minister's message should always be the good news of God. It should always be the good news. I don't, I don't care what church you go to, but the message should be the good news. Uh, it brings people from death to life. Uh, restoring and redeeming and bringing value to those people that God dearly loves you. He loves you and he loves all the people that you love. He loves those in your family and those who are your friends. That's the gospel. The gospel's for them. That's the message of the minister. And that's what Paul's, that's the what of Paul's ministry. Uh, but what's the why? Well, Paul's motive was pleasing God. He wrote in verse 4 how he shared with people about the gospel, not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. Paul wanted to do what God wanted him to do. He, the simple motion, motivation be behind what he did and said was to make God happy. He wanted God to smile. Uh, parents, are you happy when your children simply and obediently uh, uh, do what you ask? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And for Paul, the why of ministry was to do whatever the Father asked of him. Have you ever questioned someone's motives? Maybe it was a free, limited time offer. And you were like, yeah, it sounds sketchy. Or maybe a friend was acting strangely and you wondered what they wanted or what was, what, what they, what was behind their request or those sort of things. We, we have kind of a radar uh, for these things when we've gained some life experience, don't we? We, we question motives sometimes. Well, someone in Thessalonica wasn't having it. They didn't believe that Paul's motives were that simple and straightforward. In verse 3, Paul wrote that he did not have impure motives. 
And he wasn't just trying to please people. He said that in verse 4. He goes on to debunk the myths by saying in verse 5 that he wasn't motivated by greed, as some people were apparently saying. And he certainly wasn't looking for praise from people, he said in verse 6. Paul found incredible joy in simply having the pleasure of the Father in doing and saying what he asked of him. And I fall so short in that regard. We all probably do. Uh, we want people to notice and comment and like and heart emoji face everything that we do. We so often want praise from people. And so often don't take the time to receive the words of encouragement and pleasure from the heart of God directly into our lives. He's speaking those words to us. I love you. I'm pleased with you. I long for great things to happen in your life. He's saying those things to us. And Paul would hear those and he'd go, that's all the motivation I need. Lord, may we learn. May we learn how to find our motivation and joy in simply pleasing you. You are God and you're deserving of all our attention and all of our obedience. It's selfish of me when I look for alternate motivations and reasons why in simply sharing the what. <laughs> your message of love and grace and forgiveness. Lord, help us. Help us today. But now we know the what and the why of Paul's ministry. But this section of scripture also gives us a glimpse into the how. Paul's manner was honest and good. In verse 3, Paul infers that people were spreading rumors that he was trying to deceive them somehow. The appeal we make he said, for the gospel, does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. He said, he wrote that out. I don't know about you, but I imagine Paul uh, in his, um, you know, one room bachelor pad in Corinth, he's writing, nor are we trying to trick you. And then just rolling his eyes and maybe doing a two-handed face rub and just going, ah, these people, how, why should I have to defend how I share the good news? People were outright lying about him. And he wasn't in Thessalonica to speak to them. It was probably like doing a uh, Twitter battle by snail mail, writing letters back and forth. No, I'm not trying to deceive you. They didn't only spread falsely that he was trying to trick people, uh, but that he was using flattery in his words and wearing a mask to hide his true motives. But you can read that in verse 5. Uh, but we can read that his true manner in sharing the gospel was that of courage. In verse 2, he wrote, with the help of God, we dared to tell you his gospel. He and his traveling companions had experienced strong opposition, he says. I don't know if you've read the New Testament, but it's filled with stories of how Paul and other messengers of the good news were persecuted for bringing Jesus Christ to people. It took courage to share the gospel. And that was the manner in which he did it. And it takes courage for us to share the gospel too, but we can do it. Then Paul showed that he shared the message in gentleness. Uh, verse 7 and 8, just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. I don't get the feeling Paul was uh, beating people with his King James Bible. He, he says in verse 6 that he could have asserted his authority as an apostle, but he didn't. He was gentle. He was caring. And this, this manner that he used was also loving. Verse 8, we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you, he says. And we dealt with each of you like a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, urging you to live for God. That's verse 11 and 12. The people in Thessalonica were not just numbers for his convert checklist. Paul said they weren't just tithers supporting his travels. Uh, they were real people whom he loved and he felt the burden and pressure of sharing the hope of Jesus. He did not want to deceive them or even come across like he was in any way some sort of oily salesman. He didn't want that to happen. Sometimes we can get that way. Hey, it's a limited time offer. You know, accept Jesus now or burn forever. But his manner was courageous and kind and loving. And that's the how of Paul's ministry. And it's a good reminder for me when I read and I hear these words. But as we come to the very end of today's sermon, good stories often have a plot twist. And here's the plot twist. 
I'm not the minister. You are. My charge is laid out in Ephesians chapter 4 that we read right at the beginning. It's to lead and train and encourage and equip God's people for works of service and ministry so that the body of Christ may be built up. It's a weak church that only relies on the pastoral staff to do the ministry. But it's a strong, mature church that has all of its members taking on the ministry and sharing the gospel message out of a motivation to simply please the Lord and a manner uh, doing it in a way that's courageous and kind and loving as each part does its work. That's what it said at the end of uh, Ephesians 4.16. That's you. That's you. You fantastic minister, you. Uh, God has appointed work for you to do as part of his church family. So share Jesus. Share Jesus with your friends. Share Jesus with your family, with, your, with the people, whomever God points out. Just listen to his voice. That's what we're doing. We're hearing God's voice and acting as you live and walk with him every day. You are a minister. And you can simply do what Paul simply did. You can. Allow me to pray for you as you minister in the power of the Holy Spirit this week. Father God, thank you. And, and, and that's really what we need. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need the power of your presence in us, prompting us to uh, simply share the message of God's great love. That's what you have for each of us as ministers. Uh, Lord, allow us to, to do the spiritual work of bringing new life to people um, humbly and graciously, Lord. And you, you do that through us with the Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit is already bringing people to you and already preparing people to hear the nugget, to hear the message, to hear the good news that we share about Jesus. You're, you're doing the work, Lord. And, 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 and may we do it, Lord, with a heart to please you. May we always be uh, looking at that as our motivation. Lord, may we do it in a manner that is kind and loving and bold. Help us. We need your help, I pray. And, and may we all, uh, everyone who's watching today, be empowered uh, by the Holy Spirit to minister in a fresh way as you love and as you lead us this week. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stay tuned. Uh, for a live chat with Beth and I on the Kingsway YouTube channel. And have a great week, everyone. God bless you.